There's no chance that it does. But what if it do, though? What's up, guys? Open so you're in here. We are to do a nice little what if. A nice little discussion on what if Yuji Itadori's final gamble with the help of the mad lawyer, the greatest prodigy since Satoru Gojo, if this monster, this beast, of this demon actually manages to land the Executioner's Blade hit on Ryo Mitsukuna and it 100 million, billion, trillion, quintillion, nonillion works. You may be wondering why I do this, if you believe it's going to work, but I just want you to take one look around the community and see why no one has faith in this. I made a whole video explaining why I don't think this will work, but you know, I'm feeling lucky. I'm feeling enlightened, and it wouldn't be the first time Gege shattered my ankles when I thought I knew something before, so let's not waste any more time and let's hop right into it. Editing me. Ready? Three, two, one, go. What's up guys, that guy with a pencil here. Fun fact, I do happen to have it on me and keep it on me at all times. And another fun fact, this is it. This is the moment right here. This is the gamble. This will determine the fate of everything going forward. Specifically going forward. Now, like I said, I made a whole video talking about why this wouldn't happen, why this wouldn't work. But to quickly review, just in case you're wondering, well, of course, Pencil, he, we've sacrificed Higuruma for this. The Executioner's Blade been built up for a minute now. This would be the perfect way to get rid of Sukuna and nerf him down to everything, all that. It's just mainly because Sukuna hasn't shown that much. Neither has Yuji. And ultimately, as important as Higuruma is, he's not Sukuna important. He really isn't. Not even Takaba was Kenny important. Yuda had to come in and finish that one off. So that's my main reason. I just don't see us handing this. What wouldn't just be a large dub? Wouldn't be a giga sized dub? Wouldn't be an omega sized dub? But a victory battle royale size ultra dub to Higuruma Hiromi. Sure, it would go to Itadori Yuji because he's the one <sighs> piercing straight into Sukuna with the blade, but like. It would be Higuruma's technique. And I think, not just a Sukuna, personally, as a person who is actually slowly, surely, well, actually, no, I think I've been a Sukuna fan. Like I said, I have my master's in Sukuna slopping. I just have my doctorate in Gojo glazing. But with that being the case, I wouldn't really be satisfied if this took out Sukuna for that reason, because of how unimportant Higuruma is. And also, just because we haven't seen enough from Sukuna, I know this sounds crazy, but like, in spite of all that he's shown us, all his unique abilities, we really haven't seen much more than Cleave and Dismantle. We haven't even seen, as pff, as Kusgabe points out in 246, we haven't even seen the darn fire arrow. As he notes, huh, it's creepy that he isn't using fire like in Shibuya. But I'm gonna guess that he just can't use it right now. Admittedly, he shouldn't be guessing that. But the main thing is, like, he hasn't even whipped that out. Sukuna's kind of been playing soft. And, I'm sorry, the man just has so much mystery behind him that I feel like taking him out in this way would be unsatisfying in the sense that we wouldn't get to see all too much. Would it be the first time Gege's dropped the character without showing their full kit or full potential? No. But I don't know. I feel like Sukuna still has so much more to show that I feel like this dub, as amazing as a Victory Royale would be for our cast and crew... I don't think it would work on that level. Just on the narrative level and how important Sukuna is compared to how unimportant Higuruma is in the grand scheme of things. And also just how little we've seen from Sukuna. And as a byproduct, how little we've seen from this guy right here, Yuji Tadori. Like, outside of his one good lick that he got in Sukuna, Pro's been... Uh, marmot level? He's been... Chubby baby level? Where he's getting his belly grab? Like, his side? Like, bro, bro hasn't done much. And ultimately, while that's fine enough... It's cool if the arms are just an aesthetic thing. Yeah, we still also have more from Yuji Tadori that we definitely need to see. But all that aside, let's quash whatever narrative or character writing reasons or narrative weight or important or anything. Let's just push all that to the side. Swing it all to the right. The main thing that we need to talk about today is what if it does work? What if this final attempt gamble that is brought up here does actually work as remember you know one of the biggest reasons why other people well me and a lot of other people think this is going to fail is because of the fact that Higuruma is perishing live on air look at broski hey kusakabi and have a conversation 
Curses don't always weaken after death. And Ikurum even theorizes, yeah, the general idea is that they get stronger. So, hypothetically, let's say this does work. Let's say even if Higuruma falls, the execution blade is still active, it's still all down for Suguda, all that. And let's say Higuruma and Itsudori come together and actually manage to pierce and destroy the king of curses. Great, fantastic, 19 plus the mummy worth of fingers and Sukuna is gone, wiped immediately. Presumably this would execute Sukuna, 100%. He would be gone, which obviously is a net positive. Notably, a character like Yuda Kotsu would not have to fight a 20-finger Sukuna. Hallelujah! A character like Maki Zen would not have to fight 20-finger Sukuna. Hallelujah! A character like Itadori Yuji would not have to continue. Fight is a loose word. A fight is a very, very loose word for what Itadori Yuji was doing to Sukuna, but he would no longer have to fight Ryo <laughs> Sukuna, which is hallelujah, fantastic stuff. All this looking great, wonderful, beautiful, scrumdiliumptious. And honestly, you know who would most likely get ganked in this scenario if nothing else happens from this point on? A little certain someone that we all know and love would happen to get ganked. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this little fellow right here, Arame, who's currently... Is it Arame or Arume? I say Arume, but I've heard people say Arame. I have no idea. I need to just watch the anime. I believe they said their name at this point. But essentially, yeah, Arame is getting ganked. Like, horribly ganked. Like, currently they aren't even able to take out, like, Jack Potokari. What happens when a fully manifested Rika drops on their dome piece? What happens when Maki Zenin comes out the cut and gets the revenge, gets the lick back for that maximum output that they got trapped in? What happens when Itadori Yuji starts... <laughs> and just shatters her ice or their ice or anything like that? Like, there's so many different things that could happen to Arume if nothing pops off. But there's a reason I have this pulled up. My deepest apologies. I was unable to find the last finger. So... This is the big thing. Even if we hypothetically do sack this Sukuna, the Sukuna that's at 20 fingers, the Sukuna that just fought Satoru Gojo, even if all that gets gone, annihilated, wiped from existence, nigh on instantaneously by the pierce of this very blade, Sukuna himself is not actually deleted from the narrative. At least not fully. That last finger is still entirely in play. Now, a lot of people are assuming that last finger is in play for the good guys. Like, who knows? Considering Sukuna in 2.22 theorizes that, well, probably, in order to postpone the boy's execution, he proposed to the higher-ups that they wait until the boy ate all my fingers. If I had to take a guess, he wouldn't sit around and do nothing. But he's been holding on to one of my fingers, putting the death sentence on an indefinite hold. So, I ain't gonna lie to you. It's looking kind of embarrassing. Quite embarrassing indeed, in the sense that Tsukuna doesn't actually know where his last finger is. No one does. Like, well, we have an idea. But once again, it wouldn't be the first time someone theorized something in Jutsu Kaisen was just flat out wrong. Who knows where that last finger is? But essentially, we can lose this Tsukuna without actually losing Tsukuna. Which is a blessing and a curse, quite literally. In the sense that we do have a full scale, full power, absolutely complete Sukuna right here that we will be sacking for this, but the beauty of this last finger being a thing, this last thing that can come out of nowhere and do what it do when it be like that, especially when it be like that, is that you do get a Sukuna that can still fight. But there are a couple issues with that. Sure, we don't know where the last finger is, but we also don't know who would eat it and become Sukuna's next vessel. Presumably, Uraume does not have it. Sukuna does not have it. That was confirmed by Sukuna's only means of incarnation being refreshing his original body, and also the fact that Uraume just clearly states here in 222 they don't know where it is. For the longest time, and I may still be holding this, and we'll be talking about it in a second, for the longest time, I thought this bozo right here had it. <laughs> I thought this man, this myth, this legend happened to be holding on to that last finger for safekeeping but um currently that man is a uh, kind of uh, let's just say he's banished to the shadow realm that's the nicest way to put it. he's banished to the shadow realm and sure we're going to talk about him in a second because he's also a kind of follow-up to this but just focusing on the repercussions for sukuna in particular that last finger the issue is we don't know who it would go to we don't know who it would possess because if we assume this works in the way that they theorized it worked 
for Sukuna in the sense that, well, you know, maybe, just maybe, Sukuna, if he gets pierced by the Executioner's Blade, he'll drop Higuruma, well, not drop Higuruma, he'll drop Megami as, like, a vessel, and, like, the moment the blade pierces Sukuna himself, all 19 fingers of him will be automatically purged, and Megami's body will, like, essentially, like, you ever seen how in Omniverse, or I guess they kind of do this sometimes in the original series, when Ben 10 reverts back from alien form, especially, you know, particularly in this case, the easiest reference would be forearms, his central man form, and, like, the arms shrink back into his body, and then he grows his hair back, and then the eyes, like, fuse back. Like, you could just argue that would happen for Megami. He dropped, so I guess, legally speaking, he'd still be a viable vessel for that last finger, but also he's, like, surrounded by everybody else who would make sure he wouldn't be the last finger. Like, or eat the last finger. Like, no one's gonna be there. And unfortunately, unlike last time when Sukuna got this body in the first place, Megami, well, he had a body that he was leaving that he had a whole contract with, with the holding chain situation. Right here, right now, this is the only body he has dominion over, and he doesn't know about that last finger, which is not currently incarnated. So it would have to be someone, whether it be Orame, whether it be Kenjaku, whether it be one of their servants, or something like that, to come in and feed that finger to Megami again to turn him into another vessel, and... Even still, I don't think that's going to happen. Same thing with Ithuru Yuji. If he were to eat the last finger spontaneously right now, I don't think anything would actually happen. In the sense that Tsukuna would not suddenly get a new vessel, nor would Ithuru use, con use control? Yes. But lose control? No. He would not lose control. Considering Tsukuna would be one finger worth. And it was stated that the only reason Tsukuna even got control all the way back in Shibuya is because it was ten fingers while Yuji was knocked out, beat, down, abused, all the stuff like that. So, right now, if this Sukuna falls, we kind of do hard to lose Sukuna. Which isn't necessarily the worst thing. In fact, it's arguably the best thing that can happen right now for our cast and crew. Remember, the whole reason everybody showed up to work today was to get rid of this guy. That's the whole reason everyone clocked in. Everyone punched in so they could punch in on this man's face. One fist, each eyeball, just buried straight in the socket. That's what they were all here for. So, legally speaking, sure, taking Sukuna out in this way, using the Executioner's Blade and just, you know, getting rid of Broski, yes, legally speaking, it is the best case scenario that happens for our characters because that, once again, literally, in terms of the active characters who are definitively still alive, presumably at the time of 247, that just leaves Arame, or Arame, whichever you want to call him. And I don't think I need to convince you that, sure, Hakari may struggle against Arame, but... I don't think Maki, a uh, fully manifested Rika, full power Yuda, a, I mean, not fresh, but like a relatively fine Itsudori Yuji, and everyone else on top of, let's see, Hakari, Maki, Yuda, Yuji, plus everyone else. I think if Urume gets that ganked, they're done. They're instant, like they're cooked alive for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's as simple as that. I don't really see anything transpiring in the sense of Uraume winning that matchup. And the series ends. Presumably. Once again, if nothing happens, sure, that last finger is 100% still a variable. And I believe something will happen with it that I'll talk about in a second. But if we just go with the idea that, okay, Kenny's on the ground and his will will be inherited, but he doesn't say his will will be inherited right now. He doesn't say he's going to be hopping bodies. He doesn't say anything like that. At the end of 243, all that Kenny says is, Oh, I see. I hate to leave so much undone, but my will shall be carried on. So, you know, he's got something set up, but we don't know what that means, what that entails. Once again, ever since 243, we've cut away from this entire interaction, and it hasn't even been mentioned. We have no idea where Yuta is. We have no idea where... Well, we know where they are, but we don't know, like, where they are relative to the Sukuna battlefield. So who knows, maybe Yuta got possessed, maybe Takaba got possessed, if you think he perished. There's so many different things that could go into that. But once again, just assuming that Kenny's on the ground and his will will be inherited in like a thousand years or something. Once Sukuna's gone, without the ability to incarnate into another vessel, bro, it's good. Like, like there, there's legit nothing else they could do. Because, sure, it's good that he has that final finger, but unless someone's using that for him and putting it into a specific vessel in order for him to incarnate, it's just going to sit there. Forever. And a day. Because presumably Kenny would be cooked, or is going to get cooked, and he's cooked. 
And that would be it. That would be the end of Ryoman Tsukuna. The end of Jusu Kaisen. Our last sorcery fight. But... That's once again going with the most generous, and I mean most generous, sloppiest, most juicy, toppiest interpretation of what will transpire if this bad boy final gambit does end up landing. And Mr. Jutsu Sorcerer over here actually does not sell the bag. But, of course, there are always options. Number one, it's this bell boy right here. You see, you see, it would be... Not you, not you, not any of you, not a single one of you, but you, merger sama. So, that's the thing. The merger is still an entirely likely concept, mainly because Tengen is still presumably autonomous or under orders from Kenny to just start the merger if things get bad, and things definitely have gotten bad. So, sure, while we may 100% sack Ryoman Tsukuna, who is a lot of people's favorite antagonist, one of the more important antagonists, if not, in a lot of people's mind, the antagonist of Jujutsu Kaisen, well, we may sack all of that, but, well, we still have this, this whole plot line. The whole Culling Games thing kind of needs to be wrapped up because there are massive skyscraper towering over barriers running around that force people into... So there are definitely things that need to transpire in regards to that. And this is where all the elements kind of start to fold together. In this similar vein to how, you know, a saying will go burst open and mix. We're going to burst open all the loose plot threads and try to mix them together in terms of some sort of cohesive scenario in order to make it so that we still get everything that we are sacrificing by this moment at the end of 247 working. Because we're sacrificing quite a decent bit to make this work in terms of the plot. Not necessarily, I mean, somewhat in the scale, like, the, realistic, once again, one of the biggest reasons why I don't think this will work, and a lot of people don't think it'll work, it's because Tsukuna should be able to dodge this. He should know Itadori Yuji's right behind him. It should take him no It should just be like, oh. <sighs> Brett, how many times do I gotta tell you? <sighs> 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 You horn us all get out, dog. And he just dips out the way. Like, there's no reason he shouldn't do that. But presumably, if he does, and Megami does fall out, then this does leave an avenue open for whoever inherits Kenny's will to start cooking. Whether that be a little, well, not literal full, but a full literal manifestation of Kenny simply incarnating into a new body, whether that be Takaba or Yuta and showing up and starting to cook with the merger, and or once again that final finger that super omega crazy giga vague final finger that could be in anybody's hands could be in the good guy's hands could be in the bad guy's hands could be stuck at the bottom of the sea for all we know we don't understand what could transpire if things work out in the way they do here in terms of what kenny is cooking do you smell it I smell, I smell some. I smell the merger coming. But what I also smell is Sukuna still getting to get his full reveal of abilities. Remember, by sacrificing him here, we do lose that. But there is a way we can work that back in by using the last finger as a catalyst for the merger. What do I mean? Remember, Sukuna's fingers are like super duper special. They have insane amounts of cursed energy, power, and arguably a stabilization core they essentially act as that because remember the fingers are pretty much indestructible it's to the point where gojo tells at the beginning of the series yeah no one's been able to destroy them not even me I mean that hypothetically if you were to reel back with a full stakes 100 million trillion quintillion percent hollow purple danced by like a billion or umes not her umes a billion udahimes then the fingers would still be fine like just absolutely just fine. There's no real issue there. And the thing with that is that that would make them the perfect core, the perfect stabilizer for something that would be as unstable as the merger. Because remember, the merger isn't just the culmination of one colony or two colonies or three or four. It's culmination of all the colonies, all their cursed energy, all the cursed energy of all the people in Japan, the most cursed energy rich area in the entire world. And that's all being packed together. And sure, you know, there's Tengen's whole initial fear of the merger, like, hey, 
I'll be real with you. I may be an evolved human, but I'm barely even human anymore. Wait till I get snatched up by curse spirit manipulation and then forced to do things I wouldn't do. But that being the case, Tengen does by proxy have overseeing over everything. Everything in the verse. In the sense that, you know, they view everything from that higher plane. And if they absorb everybody and have access to all that raw curse energy, all that raw curse za and all that power, who knows what could transpire with the merger? And who knows what could be used as a core to maintain that? Presumably, you may be able to argue that Tengen's body would be better because Tengen's body is immortal. But I do generally believe that the finger would be a better stabilizer. And as a byproduct, you can get kind of the best of both worlds. You can get a Sukuna broken off from the merger using the power that was formed around his finger to form a new body or using all the flesh that was use the power of the new body. Bada bing, bada boom. You could use that. In order to, you know, how do I put this? Fight against the merger for its own on top. But the thing is, though, if the finger is a stabilizing core and Sukuna hops out of it, incarnating through a body made of the flesh of all the people that turned into the merger, I'm not sure how, not only how strong would he be, but like, could he just be reabsorbed? I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what would transpire there. But that's the thing. There's so much mystery on how this can work out. There's so many different places this can go, even if Sukuna loses here. And once again, the beauty of this in particular is the fact that we just don't know. We have not a clue in the world what Kenjaku is truly and honestly. Story. Women. Risa. Ribbon and Libin and Flippin. Like, we have no idea what Kenny's actually cooking, and we have no idea who's actually meant to inherit his will. There are still unresolved plot threads of major importance that do not all revolve around this four eyed man who's out here double donutin' people. That's a good thing, because essentially it just leaves the door wide open. We could get another Sukuna to finally have that Catharsis Yuji versus Sukuna matchup, even though that would kind of be. It'd kind of be sad, because it'd just be Yuji versus One Finger Sukuna. So, like. If you think one figure Zuka is fodder, then Yuji beats beats him up. But if you think all the stats are uniform, then they may have a good fight. But that's the thing. It's uh it's something else. It's something else in terms of what could be transpiring there with that one finger Sukuna. But with the one finger Sukuna plus the Kenny plan, plus Urume still fighting, plus so much, there's still so much that can transpire after the fact. That I'm not necessarily all too worried if the plan doesn't go as planned. And I think there still is a whole bunch that can still transpire thanks to the mystery of it. How would I write it? That's the issue though. I'm not exactly sure how I would incorporate it because Kenny's head is on the ground. And we just don't know how the merger activates or what the rules are on how it's supposed to activate now that, I don't know. Presumably Megami Fushiguro would still be alive, just not Tsukuru Geto, meaning that half that rule would be broken. And presumably Tengu would just be able to turn off the killing games at any point if they really felt like it. Maybe using this finger as a stable, but then again, they have the body as a stable. There's so many different things that can still happen that if it does work, I don't think it's horrid, even though I kind of don't want it to work still. Even though there's still definitely loose threats. There's still definitely the fingers. There's still definitely the murder. There's still definitely Kenny cooking. There's still definitely a bunch of other things. I still think as a whole... We lose more if it works. That's the thing. I've been talking all positively about, oh, yeah, you know, everything's going to be happy. Everything's going to be good. Great. Yeah, we're going to do a little dancey dance and all stuff like that. But the thing is, we don't get any more cooking from the shiesty sorcerer if Sukuna loses right here. We don't get any more chefing it up in the kitchen from the main man Kusakabe if Sukuna loses right here. Well, actually, I mean, that's the thing. I guess likely we could, but it's all against one finger Sukuna. So, like, either we boost one finger Sukuna through the roof or we I don't know. That's the main thing. You would have you would have to boost one finger Sukuna, or you would have to give the merger so much. And that's the thing. You can't give it too much raw power because the thing is, if the merger is too strong, if it's stronger than Sukuna, then you just run into the same issue again. Where uh oh, we now have the merger, which is stronger than Sukuna. I mean, I guess you could just make it dumber, but without like Satoru Gojo, if the thing's stronger than Sukuna when it's just moving around, then I'm not sure how they're supposed to stop it. I'm supposed to be not sure how Ichidori Yuji is supposed to stop. That's the thing. There's so many vague things left up in the air, but I think overall it would be a net negative if it worked out. 
because we'd be sacking so many different things. We would be sacking the information on Tsukuda's technique. We'd be sacking the information on Isidori's technique. We would be giving Hiruma too big of a role. We would be sacking anything that would have to do with this Tsukuda doing anything else but, you know, styling on the rest of our cast and crew, whether it be from Kashimo all the way up to Itadori Yuji in this very chapter. There's so many different things that you would lose as a byproduct of letting this work that I don't think it's worth in the end. Even if it would make our characters happy, even if it would end the series much, much faster, even if it would save a whole bunch of lives, I still want the King of Curses to evade and declare himself superior to the likes of one Itadori Yuji. However, that's what I think. Please what you guys think in the comment section down below. What do you think would happen if this actually ends up working? If the attack actually ends up landing, Itadori ends up cooking and pierces Tsukuna and gets him up out of here? Do you think one finger Tsukuna comes into the play one way or another through the narrative? Do you think the one finger ends up being used as a basis of the merger? Do you think the merger is even still going to happen with the note of Kenjaku being, you know, a head on the ground? Do you think anything else will transpire? Please let me know all that and more in the comment section down below. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, please leave sorcerer i uh, am literally like it's, it sounds so weird but sorcerer i uh, am instead of i am a sorcerer drop the i and flip the sentence backwards sorcerer i uh, am in the comment section down below and the thing is for watching please want to leave a like share comment and subscribe and make sure you hit that notification bell so you do not miss out on any videos that come to the channel also also i do happen to have a p -p 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 patreon down below where you can support me for as low as one cut them one down month things like exclusive videos early content and more you also now become a member of the channel for as low as three does one to get the same perks and more some of those perks will include the live reaction to the very next chapter of jujitsu kaisen now the thing is for watching once again and i hope you guys have a wonderful day this is that of the pencil writing off I'd like to give a thank you to our $3 members, Recliner Plays, Red Wolf, 4765, Greyhound, and Akids Void. And I'd like to give another thank you to our $5 patrons, Victor, Sean, Midnight Gemlord, Kevin, DemixLND, and Igneal. And I'd like to give a chunk of old thank you to our $7 member, Autumn's Morning Lazo. And I'd like to give another chunk of dunk of thank you to our $10 patrons, Robbie Uchiha, Joaquin, iDemokami, and China Doll 09. I'd like to give a hefta, defta, tracta thank you to our $25 member, Alex Ice Rose. I'd like to give another giga gargantuan thank you to our $25 patron, Calvin Elder.